Hi everyone, my name is Habiba Yaone Moseni Manga. I am a second year law student and I absolutely love theatre with all of my heart. I take it as an elective. Hello, my name is Alfred. I'm a theatre student, third year theatre student. Hello, my name is Bonani and I'm a second year law student but I've been taking theatre as an elective since first year. Hi, hi, hi! My name is Sabaha. I do second year theatre. And I'm Matilda and I do third year theatre. Hi, my name is Sato Mwengi. I am a third year visual and performing arts student majoring in theatre studies in the University of Botswana. Um, my name is Bano Ziba, Tato Gambalume. I'm a law student here in the University of Botswana. Hi everybody, um, my name is Kamzi Marokani. I am a final year majoring student in Bachelor of Fine Arts, Theatre Arts. I am an artist, an actor, a creative, a writer, and yeah, let's not break. <laughs> what is theatre to you or what has it been to you since you arrived? A safe space, a place to be my fullest and authentic self. And um, yeah, it's been a place to grow as a person as well. Um, theatre is, for me, it's, it's, it's a combination of different elements to create something beautiful, something worthwhile, something that will make an audience happy, you know, <laughs> alive, feel beautiful. Um, yeah. For me, <laughs> theatre is just a way of expressing things without expressing them explicitly like using various like lightings and the costumes and the acting to like convey a certain idea or feeling that you feel very emotive about to an audience who can consume it that and it's another way of making money theater is the use of voice body movement anything artistic to create, um, devise a project, or portray a message on stage for raising awareness. Uh, theater is to entertain people, yeah, and get attention as an actor. Theater is live performance to me. It encompasses a lot of things, but I think live performance is just the umbrella um, way to define it. Yes. What are some of your favorite characters that you've played or written about? Um, my favorite character has got to be Cicero from Soul Black Tango. Loved and it. I would second that by being Lipschitz from Soul Black Tango. Um, it was really cool to tap into a new, um, I'd like to say a new personality that was very different from my own. So I got to tap into a whole new fem feminine, seductive, um, yet sweet and psycho character that really is rare to find with me. <laughs> but yeah. I feel you. I was hot. That's, that's, really, that's really it. Um, I was amazing. I'm already vicious, so you know, I was hot. Yeah. I think my the favorite my favorite character that I've played would be Squish from South of Tango, because it had dancing and it was really provocative. So I'd enjoyed it. But then the favorite character I wrote about, I guess, would be Dr. Gilmore from I forgot the name of the play, but a play that I wrote in first year because he was he had like a Russian accent and he was just kind of kind of cuckoo and crazy so I enjoyed writing <clears throat> about him yeah uh, for me well I wish I was in South Park Tango but then I'm not a, <laughs> not a girl but anyway <laughs> uh, one character I really loved I wrote the character it was in a play we worked together devised a play with my second year uh, classmates other colleagues it was um, the priest and one of the reasons why I love the characters because it was maybe, I don't know, close to what I've always been in a way, you know. And then, second one, I really love that one was Superman. I wish I'd gone maybe all the way, <laughs> but I think I was more intrigued by the costume yeah. and the fact that I could slide. So far, there are two, hey? The very first one was from high school, it was Arthur Corbin, where I was a millionaire who got framed for murder. And stuff and the second one was um, Kasa the most recent performance because that really challenged me so I love that character so much I love my role as Munira she was a lead actor in a made-up world about pedophiles and she was a pedophile and she 
she was compelling, she was overwhelming, she was commanding, and it's complete opposite from who I am as a person. It looks as though I might be someone who can speak out and say whatever they feel, but honestly, that's just my, my alter ego. I'm more of a quiet person. My favorite act, my favorite character that I've played, okay, so it's a character that I played um, when I was volunteering at the House of Young, I played a character called Mabula in a play called Hell No. It was a play about just general social issues that young people face. And my character was in a domestic, basically experiencing gender-based violence. So I, it was the most challenging character I've ever played, a very emotionally taxing, but I think it's my favorite because it's the character that stretched me as an actor. Um, my most favorite character that I've ever had to play would have to be the Duchess of Berwick. I played a character called the Duchess of Berwick in second year 203 by Professor Connie. Um, and she was a very debutante style British woman and she had very much character, was a very gossipy character, full of life, the life of the party. I think I liked her because she uh, pushed me out of my, um, my shy zone or shying away from sharing a, a huge persona of mine and I, I think that's the most um, interesting character I've played. As for writing, my favorite character that I've ever written is an, an assassin vigilante called Selina Lejona um, that I submitted for my 404 with Mr. Defopaya. And she was a vigilante who was basically a, a, an anti hero, arguably. So, yeah. So, what are some of the challenges that you faced as an actor? I think rehearsals. Because sometimes, like, yeah, they be draining. <laughs> <laughs> they generally be draining. They take the whole day. But, like, other than that, it's just rehearsals and trying to mix and match with your, my law. So that was one of my main challenges. There's a plethora of challenges. But I think my biggest challenge would be acting with somebody who is, like, a nervous wreck because you just can't connect with them. Because you think you're going the same direction and then they break down then you have to comfort them but then you're also just like hey but you know due date is coming you know it's either now or never girl get yourself together but then you don't want to be so cold hearted cold hearted cold hearted and be like you know so it's hard to deal with someone like that because you are just trying to get the job done but someone here is having a roller coaster of emotions so yeah mm -hmm. for me challenge uh, i would say <clears throat> Working with people who are not consistent. That's cause cause you put you put in the work, you come on time, you do this, and then people are just I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Cause it would make, you know, our performances even better if everyone was as consistent as you are and everyone was applying themselves accordingly. Mm -hmm. That would make us even, you know, better than we actually are. Getting into character <laughs> is a challenge that I've faced. Um because you're basically a chameleon, you're having to change. So being so having to step out of myself, get um, put aside my own personality traits, how I talk, how I walk, um, to be able to sink into what <laughs> to be able to sink into a different character. Um, just just the process of that is challenging but exciting at the same time. Modulation, voice modulation. I need to work on that. Um, I think I still believe that I'm still acting in my mirror in the middle of the night when no one is looking at me. So I think everyone can hear me, but no one can really hear me. <laughs> I think my biggest challenge ever, having been an actor in this theater and around, is that I can't seem to get myself to cry. Like, I've tried, <laughs> and crying seems to be the biggest wall that um, I don't, really conquer but I learned something from our former lecturer Dr. Snowell had always said it's never when you cry that gets the audience to cry but it's always when you hold back the tears that really makes it special so that's helped me a lot. Girl I got this one. <clears throat> Having to deal with other actors. Why? <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, it was horrible. Especially when um, you're at a certain level and you have to deal with somebody below you a little bit. That's traumatizing. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, I'd say the stage fright. It's not fun getting on stage every single day. I feel like you'd think I'm used to it by now. However, no. <laughs> it's, it's quite terrifying being on stage in front of an audience sometimes. But I've, over the time, I've learned with the help of like, you know, directors and our lecturers, we've learned how to you know, work our way around it. So we look convincing on stage, but we're scared. <laughs> we're scared. <laughs> but it's fun. It's, it's the thrill. It's, it's amazing. All right. So pick one. Designing or script writing? Script writing. Script writing. None of the above. Designing, hey? Designing miniatures especially. Script writing. Let's skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go for designing, but I also love writing, but I'll just say designing for now, designing. I have no sense of fashion or style or colors, so I would go with skip writing. <laughs> I find it easier, you know. Directing or acting? Directing. Ooh, that's tough. Acting. Both of them. Yeah. 50-50. Well, acting is fun, but directing is fulfilling. So I'd say, yeah, both, because of those mm -hmm. reasons. I hear you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like people. I can't direct people to save a life. So <laughs> I guess acting is just you. You focus on yourself. Acting. Acting. I love attention. Both. It's fun. I like being a leader, and I like being on stage. But... Drama, comedy, musicals, or tragedies? So pick two guys. Pick two. You have to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, let me go first. All right. <clears throat> Comedies are cool, but I don't like the, you know, the heftiness. Then dramas are too dramatic. Like, I can't uh, relate with them. I like um, musical theaters and uh, tragedies. Because I just, I don't know why, I just love watching a character suffer. <laughs> I just love watching a character suffer. Sadistic like, much? Yes. <laughs> yes. If, it's a, it's, if it's a story where someone got to die, I'll be waiting for that. <laughs> oh my God. And waiting for it on the edge of my seat. And then musical theatre, just because I really love music and dancing. And it's just lovely. For the record, she's not a killer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, As for me, I would say I love tragedies. Drama and tragedy drama on the first one and then musical on the second one love me a good musical mm. i think tragedies have a way to people's hearts and i think musicals also have a way to people's hearts so i picked both uh we do comedy and musicals um musicals and tragedy drama comedy any type of theater you know poor theater <laughs> theater of the oppressed <laughs> Uh, theater of the Absurd? Um, improvisational theater. Okay. okay. Explain that one. <laughs> um, I mean, it's self-explanatory, really. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just improvising the whole time. And you have to feed off of each other. It's not easy. You can't <laughs> say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keeps the ball rolling. Um, I like Absurd Theater because it dives into the meaninglessness of human existence. I show theater practitioners go to a place and live with the people, get a sense of how, how the people go about life and what problems they experience. And then they work together with them in creating a story to be able to portray um, the things that they go through as well as in the narrative possibly include some solutions for their problems. Um, community theater. Community theatre has to do with involving members of the community at large um, to get them to collaborate together, work on a piece that addresses the issues that they are facing. Uh, it could be anything, really. They could be facing matters of sanitation, matters of uh, child abuse, and they put it together into play, into theatre, and to communicate such a message across. Workshop theatre. Yeah. Um, what are your go-to hacks? Things you either cannot leave behind or things you always have to remember prior to a performance. Hmm. Always have a sleep. You do not want to go on that stage with chat lips. Right now, I'm looking at my lips. I'm like, girl, whoo! 
Moisturize. Moisturize. What's for you? Uh, stay hydrated and breathe. <laughs> Two of like, the most essential things anyone should do. We're still human beings, so like, mm -hmm. drink your water mm -hmm. and take deep breaths. I know it's stressful on stage and off stage, but it's okay. We're just playing. It's not real. We're just playing around. <laughs> Listen to the last four words of the person you had a scene with. Because other than that, you can't remember their lines. So, the last four words, then you know your line. I think a heck for writing for me is like, read a lot of mythology. Because you know, oh, oh, like Greek mythology is spicy. You will never go wrong. If you, if you, just, you don't even have to read the whole story. If you just check the synopsis of what the story is about, ah, you'll be great. Great. So a lot of mythology is like really weird. So you can get a lot of writing ideas from there. Mm. So check it out. For designing, because I am a designer, I love design. I usually pick an artwork and use the color scheme. That's if you're going for colors and whatnot. And like use one theme. It it really works for most most of your whatever you're producing. Yeah, productions. Focus on a familiar face. So not necessarily all the time, but if you've got nerves, just look for a face you know. I usually look for my lecturer's face that I like the best, and it just all comes together. To just always have fun, to remind myself that at the end of the day, I'm just here to have fun. And also when I get nervous, I remind myself that the people are there to see me, not wasting their time. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. This is for dress and like behind set. Sometimes you put something on and it's about to like fall off. So always have a clip. Always have like a, a pin. A pin to either pin something on for clothing items that don't have a zipper. Because sometimes things happen very last minute and now the dress is falling off. You've got to go on in five seconds and you know, it's not working out. Oh, and water. Water should always be close by behind stage because you can get very parched because of the nerves. So water must always be backstage. What is your biggest pet peeve or things that annoy you while you're working in this space? I, maybe people will say this a lot, but when people move things that you've left just peacefully. Why lens also? I'm coming for you guys. I'm coming for you guys. Leaving the theater in a mess. Don't, don't litter. Don't, don't leave chairs anywhere. Just leave it as you found it which was probably clean, like how it is now. Leave it like this. Don't yeah. mess it up. Just keep it like this. You know what, what Douglas did? He made me um, have this thing where people pull furniture and yeah. it goes And I'm like, whoa! The my pain. heart, my <laughs> heart goes on the floor. I the can't pain. deal with that, I can't deal with that. So please respect the floor, it's a dance floor, it's a really nice floor. Huh, people that don't know their lines. <laughs> well, people don't follow rules, like, at the beginning of a play, you could be told, okay, so no cameras, no flashing, none of that. And then you'll hear a phone ringing. Then you'll, hear, then you'll see a flashlight. And it's just like, respect the theater. Be in the moment. Like, I understand you want to record, but be in the moment. <laughs> be phoned out. When people misplace things, like you have put a certain prop there for a certain time, and you walk on, and the the, the prop is not there and you know you've done it a hundred times it's it's a big it's my biggest pet peeve like i walk in expecting to see the set how it was and then i find that it's been touched by someone else or been messed with by someone else and so it 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 sets me off oh and people who laugh oh yeah 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 but people who laugh when um, you're in character and it's a very emotional character it's a very upsetting character and people laugh <laughs> my biggest pet peeve is people who are absent-minded who don't pay attention because it's like i told you this and you're, you're asking exactly what i answer <laughs> when you're asked can you comment on this you're like sorry what were we talking about like why are you here yeah. why are you here you <laughs> listen put the phone away put it down and just get involved mm. and then now when it gets when time comes to start implementing things you you take 10 steps back trying to get this person to catch up to the train of thought you guys are on. <laughs> so it's like, guys, just listen. It's really not that hard. Really. For me, it's, it's also about people. People are arrogant. You come here, you've only had a few days of experience. The next day, and you want to tell us how to do our work. I'm like, nah, 
just you know be be humble that's one thing being humble really helps